circa 1800, China was not only one of the major economic engines of global trade, it was also one of its main population centers, and it was growing. To help explain the dramatic population growth we see in late imperial China, we must return, as it were, to the New World and the Americas, this continent discovered, quote-unquote, by Columbus in his effort to find a more rapid passage to China. One major factor that enabled massive population growth in late imperial China during the Ming and Qing dynasties, and indeed population growth elsewhere in the world over the same period, was the importation of new crops indigenous to the New World, such as potatoes, corn, and peanuts. The potato is not native to China, nor is it native to the United Kingdom. Neither is corn. Rather, in the wake of the Columbus expedition, crops such as these slowly but steadily began to circulate through Spanish networks into the Eurasian continent, South Asia, and ultimately China. The key aspect of potatoes and other New World crops is that many of them can be grown in marginal soil, while at the same time providing considerable nutritional value. It is food, in essence, for the poor, which can sustain life into maturity and therefore into childbearing years. People can survive longer and thus can have children. The potato's role in history is not limited to China. At the same time that China was undergoing this explosive population growth, so too was Britain. When we examine the population of Britain at roughly the same time as the population boom in China, we find that the cultivation of potatoes helped triple the nutritional productivity of farmland, contributing to a doubling of the country's population in the half century between 1780 and 1831. According to one study, the circulation of New World crops, such as the potato, accounted for 17% of the population growth in Europe and Asia between the years 1700 and 1900. 